Which brings me on to one thing which you like ain't asked the question about. But um, there is a really toxic thing I see among some Caribbeans and some black Americans running around saying that Africans sold us into slavery. I would recommend every single one of you, A, exercise some common sense and th think a bit more about history and I'll, I'll explain why, but also read, there's a book called Resistance Slave Trade, West African Strategies. The reason why I say this is because, firstly, political treachery has been normal among every group of people for all of human history, right? The Visigoth Spaniards invited the Moors into conquer, into conquer them. The uh, Chinese helped the British uh, sell opium in China. The Indian elite profited from the Bengal famine. The Anglo-Irish landlords profited from the famine in Ireland and on and on and on, right? What actually happened in West Africa was that some people, of course, sold human beings, just as some black people would sell human beings today. Just as some people of every ethnicity today are engaged in human trafficking. What many of you have been so successfully brainwashed into believing is that there was no resistance in Africa itself. There were more rebellions on the west coast of Africa against transatlantic slavery than any island in the Caribbean. So tell the whole story. If you want to say there were African slave traders, of course there were, no problem. Just tell the whole story though, innit? There were more rebellions, I'm going to repeat that, on the west coast of Africa against transatlantic slavery than any island in the Caribbean. On top of that, the Haitian Revolution was fought by people born in Africa. Where do you think they learned to fight like that, Regin? They were in armies in Africa. They were in armies in the Congo. They were in armies in, in, in Ghana. Most of the people who fought the Haitian Revolution were Africans. The Maroons in Jamaica were not born in Jamaica. They were born in Ghana. Where do you think they learned to fight like that? They learned those particular military tactics in West Africa. So all I'm saying is to tell the whole story. Some black people would sell you down the river tomorrow for money because that's how human beings work. Some of our own families would backstab us for money because that's how human beings work. But this idea that Africans were on top of it, there's this idea that there's Africans, them and us. No black Americans, Jamaicans or Caribbeans left West Africa. The only people that left West Africa were Igbo, Yoruba, Aousa, uh, Ibibio, Wolof, uh, Tukolo, Puel. They were Africans. They were Congo, they were, they were Lingala, etc, etc, etc. So this idea that there was us and them, what about the African families left behind whose families got sold into slavery? You're not interested in their story? You're not interested in what they did to get their family members back? Your literal cousins were left behind. So I, that's one thing I really want to address because it, a lack of honesty around the history. Last thing I'll say on it, and some of those same Caribbeans and black Americans who say that are much less quick to talk about the history of Liberia. Yeah, let's, let's talk the whole thing. Much less quick to talk about the fact that the Maroons fought in the conquest of Ashanti. All that they did to deal with the British to preserve slavery. I'm not even passing a judgment on it all. History is very complicated and no one knows what they would do in a given situation if they weren't there. Just tell the whole story in it, yeah? The Haitian Revolution was a continuation of African resistance in Africa. The Jamaican Maroons were a continuation of African resistance in Africa. Africa was not a paradise. There was class in Africa, like there is everywhere else in the world. African elites in one social class willing to do things to their own commoners that, that, um, that they weren't willing to do people of their social class or of a different ethnicity and so on and so forth. But this kind of simplistic blanket Africa Last thing I'll say on it, I promise. The distance between Timbuktu and Luango, yeah, which is the capital of the old empire of Congo, is greater than the distance from London to Istanbul. That's how big Africa is. And those two places are like this far apart on a dot in a map in West Africa. So you're telling me the whole of Africa was just one polity on top of all of that? There weren't different ethnic groups, there weren't different cultures, there weren't different histories and so on and so forth, right? Um, so just tell the whole story. We don't need romanticism, but we don't need foolishness neither.